the power's out, the temperature's dropping, and that fancy HVAC system you spent thousands on is now a useless metal box full of frozen air. Here's what nobody tells you about modern heating. You've been conditioned to think warmth requires electricity, natural gas or propane. That's not survival knowledge. That's dependence. And dependence kills when systems fail. But here's the thing. Heat isn't created by your furnace. It's transferred, stored and radiated, and you can do all three without flipping a single switch. Let me show you how to turn your home into a heat battery using nothing but physics, improvisation and materials you already have. Here's the thing, nobody tells you about staying warm. Your house isn't cold because it lacks heat sources. It's cold because it's hemorrhaging thermal energy faster than you can replace it. Heat escapes through conduction, convection and radiation. Conduction through your walls and floors. Convection through air leaks and drafts. Radiation straight through your windows like they're not even there. Your job isn't to create massive amounts of heat. Your job is to stop the bleeding first, then introduce sustainable heat sources that don't require the grid. Most people do this backwards. They try to heat a leaking house. That's like trying to fill a bathtub with the drain open. Stupid, expensive, deadly in a real emergency. So let's fix the hemorrhage first, then talk about heat generation. Method one, the blanket fortress. Dead airspace is your best insulator. Take every blanket, comforter and heavy curtain you own. Hang them from your ceiling to create a smaller insulated space within your larger room. Not decorative, functional. You're building a fabric cocoon that traps your body heat and blocks drafts. Focus on one room, usually the smallest room with the fewest windows. Hang blankets over doorways, tack them to walls. Create a tent-like structure if needed. The tighter the space, the less volume you need to heat with your own metabolism. This isn't comfortable, it's claustrophobic, it looks ridiculous. But it works because you've just reduced your heating volume by 70%, using materials that were already in your closet. Inside this space, your body heat becomes sufficient. A 100 watt biological heater warming 50 cubic feet instead of 800. That's survivable, that's sustainable. Method two, window plug inserts. Your windows are thermal black holes. Single pane glass has an R value of about one. That's pathetic. A standard wall is R13 to R19. Your windows are bleeding heat 13 times faster than your walls. Cut rigid foam insulation boards or multiple layers of cardboard to fit your window frames exactly. Cover them with bubble wrap if you have it. The air pockets in bubble wrap are dead air spaces. Dead air doesn't conduct heat. Seal the edges with duct tape or weather stripping. Remove them during the day if you need light or solar gain. Reinstall them at sunset when radiation heat loss accelerates. You've just converted your windows from R1 to R5, or better, using garbage and tape. No window treatments? Use plastic sheeting. Create an air gap between the plastic and the glass. That dead air space is your insulator. Tape it tight, make it airtight. Every gap is a convection current stealing your heat. Method three, thermal mass battery. Rock stores heat, water stores heat. Your house probably has both. Fill every container you have with water. Paint them black if possible. Dark colors absorb solar radiation more efficiently. Place them in direct sunlight during the day. South-facing windows are ideal. Water has high specific heat capacity. It takes a lot of energy to heat water, which means it also releases that energy slowly. One gallon of water cooling from 80 degree Fahrenheit to 70 degree Fahrenheit releases about 80 BTUs. 20 gallons releases 1,600 BTUs. That's significant passive heat. Stack rocks or bricks in sunlight too. Masonry has thermal mass. It soaks up solar energy all day and radiates it back all night. Position them near your sleeping area. This is a thermal battery. Charge it with free solar energy during the day. It discharges slowly overnight, moderating temperature swings without electricity. Method four, the candle heater. Terracotta pots amplify radiant heat. Place four to six tea light candles on a heat safe surface. Invert a small terracotta pot over them. Thread a metal rod through the drainage hole and stack a larger inverted pot over the first. Leave a small air gap between pots. The candles heat the inner pot. The pot radiates heat outward. The air gap creates convection. 
the outer pot amplifies the effect. You've built a radiant heater using flower pots and birthday candles. One candle produces about 100 BTUs per hour. Six candles produce 600 BTUs. That won't heat a whole house, but it'll warm a small insulated space noticeably. Combined with the blanket fortress from Method 1, it's enough to survive. Warning, never leave candles unattended. Ensure adequate ventilation to prevent carbon monoxide buildup. Crack a window slightly. Ah yes, that seems counterintuitive, but suffocation kills faster than cold. Method 5. Solar air heater from trash. Black absorbs radiation. Air conducts that heat into your house. Collect aluminum cans, a lot of them. Paint them flat black. Stack them vertically in a shallow wooden frame covered with clear plastic or old window glass. Mount this on a south-facing exterior wall. Cut two holes in your wall where the frame mounts. One at the bottom for cold air intake, one at the top for hot air return. Seal the frame to your wall. Sunlight heats the black cans. Cold air enters the bottom, flows through the heated cans, and rises back into your house at the top through convection. No electricity, no moving parts, just thermodynamics and garbage. A 488 foot panel can produce 1,000 to 2,000 BTUs per hour in direct sunlight. Build multiple panels if you have the materials and wall space. This is free heat, passive heat, grid independent heat. Method 6 Alcohol Heater. Denatured alcohol burns clean. Fill a shallow metal can with denatured alcohol. Light it. The flame is nearly invisible in daylight, so be careful. Place a small terracotta pot over it as a heat radiator. Denatured alcohol produces about 7,000 BTUs per pint. It burns without significant carbon monoxide if ventilated properly. One pint burns for roughly three hours. Store extra fuel safely, away from heat sources. This is emergency heat, not primary heat. Use it in your insulated blanket fortress to supplement body heat during the coldest hours. One small flame in a tiny insulated space makes a massive difference between hypothermia and survival. Ventilation remains critical. Crack that window. Carbon monoxide doesn't care how cold you are. Method 7, compost pile heat. Decomposition generates thermal energy. Biology is chemistry. Chemistry is heat. If you have yard space, build a large compost pile, three feet high minimum, four feet wide. Layer brown materials like leaves with green materials like grass clippings or kitchen scraps. Keep it moist, but not soaking. Microbial decomposition is exothermic. A well-built compost pile reaches 130 degrees to 160 degrees at its core. That's a biological furnace. Run a coiled length of garden hose or PEX tubing through the center of the pile. Connect it to a small 12-volt pump powered by a car battery or solar panel. Pump water through the coil. The pile heats the water. Route the heated water into your home through a radiator or radiant floor loop if you're ambitious. This is advanced. This requires planning. But it's entirely off-grid and uses waste materials to generate consistent heat for months. The pile needs maintenance. Turn it weekly. Add materials as it decomposes. But it's renewable heat that costs nothing except labor. Here's what all seven methods have in common. They require zero electricity. They use physics, not power. They rely on materials you already have or can improvise from trash. Modern heating is a fragile system. It assumes the grid never fails, supply chains never break, and you'll always have money for utility bills. Those assumptions are dangerous. But thermal mass doesn't care about infrastructure. Dead airspace doesn't need a power company. Solar radiation is free, abundant, and apathetic to economic collapse. You're not improvising. You're using principles that heated homes for thousands of years before electricity was even a concept. The cold is a thief. It steals body heat, mental clarity, and eventually consciousness, but it's a predictable thief. It follows the laws of thermodynamics. Stop the heat loss first, insulate aggressively, then introduce passive heat sources that operate independently of systems you don't control. Your fancy furnace is a single point of failure, these seven methods are redundant, stackable, and improvised from materials corporations can't monetize or governments can't regulate. If the grid goes down tonight and doesn't come back for weeks, you're not hoping for rescue. You're not rationing body heat under a pile of blankets waiting for help. 
you're systematically managing thermal energy using knowledge, materials, and physics. You're not just surviving the cold. You're ignoring it entirely.